one's ready to go. The next person on my list. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's, that's pretty. pretty. That's, wow. Ooh, that's beautiful. What vlog size did you do? Um, it looks like the four. Yeah, it, it says, yeah, it's a real small one, but Little. the, oh, um, really the scripts. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> so that's wow. the full Whose pattern yeah. was it? Yeah. Or did you make it up? I made it up. You made it up. Good for her. Oh my gosh. That's, pretty. Pretty that's really beautiful. I love yeah, the color cool. choices. Yeah. Thank you. I have, I have a couple of things because I put this, I'm not doing it right. So I guess I was, I started in the middle. So, well, I don't know if I'll be all right or not, but so far I think I know. But that's Ooh, I like that. not our pattern. Yeah, it's the, I'm, I'm using your pattern. <clears throat> I got it here and I yeah, it goes with this kid. It just probably looks different because she's putting it together like that. Right. Instead of, instead of like that. <laughs> it's, it's this glass. <laughs> yeah, but it's yeah. supposed to be on the diagonal. Yeah, yeah. 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 and I think what she's saying is that yeah. she did it. Didn't do it, so she's going to have middle. to do it in the square. So, I'm, yeah. Okay. Is this like a short position? No, I don't know where I'll end up. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> no, I'll let you know. 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 Okay, this is not an Accu quilt, but I brought it to, to show. And I didn't, I took it before HQ, this class, but I did buy the backing here. So. I was going to say, I recognize the backing. Yeah. Cool. That's so this cool. is, oh, pretty. Uh, wool. Oh, oh wow. wow. Your gorgeous. Oh. Florals. So, oh, that's oh, wow. gorgeous. It was kind of fun. I like to do hand work. And oh, wow. so there was plenty. <laughs> Oh, that is beautiful. So you went very the nice by hand. Gold. Yeah. Okay, did you use shoes. that before you applied, or did you? Yeah, have I to use a um, just a really lightweight fuse on the block. Okay, but yeah. not on the flowers. No, the no. That's straight wool. That's straight wool. Okay. And so what we did was we used a light colored, a real light fuse, and then um, a light box, and sort of just drew. Kind of, you know, yeah. just so you can yeah. see where to place your wool, and of course the wool all had to be cut out yeah. separately. Wow. But it was really fun. Yeah. I like yeah. hand work, and yeah. it was really fun to do. Gorgeous. We yeah. are stocking now the wool um, scrap bags from Rhoda, really? and they're just little, like um, I think they're three by four inch pieces. Yeah. So perfect for. Yeah, it is. And then the thread. I do you have all the felt on me? Um, we don't yet. We okay. are bringing in Wonderfill, which will be yeah. um, a similar product. For sure. So the threads on this was all different, and the stitches, I learned a lot. But anyway, it was kind of fun to do. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. <laughs> well, I made this. I got that This here. is Quilt, the Flamingo, and I made a beach bag, and it's real stiff. And it's just something to carry my stuff in. But you can never have enough of those bags. No. <laughs> We're going to have a bags in South Carolina next month. I recognize that. Yeah. Okay. They quilted it here. This is the pattern that we just did, and I did it in oh my. the blues and reds. Wow. All the scraps that I had during the. Lovely. Love pattern. your colors. Beautiful. Yeah. Very nice. Turned out pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then they quilted it with the stars and the swirl. We got it. It's patriotic. Perfect. And it looks great. It turned out great. And I got it bound. So I get it done. Nice. Very nice. Okay, well my show and tell is a new collection we have in. I had to pull some of this off to make something with it. These are a new fabric collection from Tilda. They are a little pricier than um, our regular quilters cotton, um, but they're better fabric. So if you feel it, it's almost like a finished cotton. So one of the things that you can do with this is make clothing. So tank, tank tops. 
for summer blouses. Yeah. So very lightweight. Certainly good for this kind of way. So is it like lawn fabric? Um, no, it's not quite a lawn. Okay. It's um, it is quilt weight cotton. It's just a, it's a different yeah. base fabric than where well, this is the first time we've had Tilda in. Like so it's um, you know, this is this is the test for clothing. So how much yard is it? It's fifteen ninety nine yard. Okay. So. I suspect that we're going to see that kind of pricing yeah. for fabric before we're all said and done. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, used to be when they shipped a container of fabric, because most fabric comes from Pakistan, Vietnam, and Korea. So those are the major, I think Moda is Korea, like QT Fabrics is Pakistan, a lot of fabrics over there. So. Um, Used to be thirty five hundred dollars to get a container here. Now it's like forty five thousand for Ooh. the same container. Jeez, that's like expect it to go up again because look at the price of diesel right now. Mm -hmm. Ships run on diesel. Mm -hmm. so yeah, that's that's why you hear me saying all the time, hey, you might we buy you this. Jamie's having a price increase. Viking's having a price increase. Juki's having a price increase. This is why. Um, a lot of the companies that do uh, machines, they're not bringing their luggage over for the machines, the trolleys, because if they sold them, they would lose money. So I think it's time to start manufacturing in good old USA. That's right. Right. Yes. <laughs> that one, what would that buy? Okay, so let's go over our pattern really quick for the, if you don't have it, don't worry about it. This month is all about die number five. So if you are supplying your own fabric, you need to allow for a little bit more. These fabric requirements are for rotary cutting. So I think we did this last time. We found out you needed to add just a little bit more. But I didn't do rotary. I mean, I made the ask. Right. So yeah. I found out I had to make a few more blocks by yeah. the time I got to the end on that one. Right. So with this, these fabric estimates, You'll need a little bit more. So if it says you need an eighth, if this color, probably accurate. So um, because our strip is four inches, so you can follow along on the pattern. This pattern is fifty-two by fifty-two, so it's not a huge quilt. So no hang size left up. They're calling them nap quilts now. Yeah. Nap quilts, wow. right? Mm -hmm. Just snuggle up under it. You do need the eight inch cube, the eight inch angles, four inch cube, and four inch angles for this. Um, when we finish with this quilt, we're going to do a single session on combining four inch and eight inch cubes to make a single block. So just because Acta Quilt says, hey, it's an eight inch cube, doesn't mean you can't use a four inch mm -hmm. in it to make a more complicated block. Um, patterns in your kits. For those of you who have kits, so it's going to say, let's flip to the second pattern. So for those of you um, who do have kits, it says 12 inch width of fabric, subcut to three, four inch strips. So what I mean by that is this 12 inch piece of fabric cut it into four inch strips and then you're going to run it through your die. Super, super easy. You can get 28 pieces from a width of fabric with die number five. So everybody should have plenty of fabric for this block. Diane said it was familiar. I used it in another quilt that we did online in our, um, in our Joan Sews. Did anybody else do that one? The red, white, and blue one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You did? So, you, familiar. Yeah. How many? 28. 28. 28 per width of fabric. So, you get six twice and then you have enough for one more. So, that's 24. And that's your navy dot and uh, right. the bird for the turquoise for this particular block plus the oyster. Okay. Right. 
Um, not oyster. Did I put oyster? We're using rice paper. Oh, rice paper. I thought you said oyster, but you said oyster. I don't remember oyster, but okay. it's not a bad yeah. Rice paper. Do I have oyster on the pan? I don't no, know. No, you mentioned it last month. Okay. That's what. Um, <laughs> not a biggie. There's well, not much oyster. difference between rice paper and oyster. Oyster is just a little bit more yellowish than the rice paper. This is a true off-white. And we want this to be really bright. So to be our spring sampler, which we'll be doing in the winter. Um, so this month is all about dye number five. Everything we cut is with this one dye out of your AH cube. Has anybody not used this? Oh, out of the eight inch? Okay. Out of eight inch cubes, dye number five. And there is any of them. Okay. So when you are using this one, is it in? Yeah, it's pretty evenly. So I always start at the salvage side. And so the way I cut these, I actually, um, the way we do the kits, when I say do a four inch strip, you're laying it across the die like this. Okay, everybody see? Um, I do like to flip salvage side up because I don't want my salvage in my quilt. And then you'll be, I'll go ahead and just cut these out real quick. Six layers. So there's 12. How many did you say we needed? Four. Four. No, 24. 24. So there's 12. And then you're just going to slide this up. A little bit, and if you haven't drawn your line, let me show this. For those of you who are new, you can. These are your dies. You can draw on them, and so I take a ruler and just go down the edge of this so that I know where the cutting area is on this die. It's just a little helpful tool to help you, for one, line it up with the die because we're not putting this on the die square like this we're actually following the angle of the die. And so those lines help me keep it straight like that and closer to the straight grain. With AccuQuilt, we're not always on the grain. Sometimes we get little strings hanging off, but. How many can you cut it on? Six. Six layers. Six layers. So three folds. <laughs> and then slide that mat off, and there's my 24 pieces. I have this little piece left, so this is how you get 28. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it out because I have a whole bucket full of these half square triangles, and someday when I'm just bored and I don't feel like <laughs> making anything, I'm not the only one, I'm not the only one that gets bored. <laughs> so when I'm bored, I don't wanna work on any of the projects, but I just wanna sew. I'll get these out and just sew them together and just throw them back in another bucket to iron later because who likes doing that, right? Um, and then you can just make a real scrappy quilt. Somebody said that if you want it, if anybody makes dog beds and stuff, you can use all of those pieces for mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. All of that if you want to save them. Grandkids you have to do that. Yeah, I cut pretty close, yeah, but. <clears throat> You know, pieces like this, no serger. You can take and serge these pieces together to make your crazy quilt blocks. Yeah. And it doesn't take a lot and you have a finished edge. I did it I did a demo on the sewing machine one time. I like the serger better because it trims off. When you do it on the sewing machine, you have to go back and trim all the excess off the back. If you do it on your serger, serger does it for you. So you can take those, and and this is not too small to use. So 
You don't have a foot pedal. I have a quick question because okay. I've never honed down on cut one thing. When you line it up, you set them up the sound of salvage. I know that the salvage goes on one side, but did you angle it according to the floor? Yes. Tip it? That's what I was wondering. So yeah. let me pull these fabrics out. You only need <clears throat> four of these, but it was um so my folders. The mistake you have a little bit of extra of this. Mm -hmm. The mistake I made the first time too was doing the dye the other way and then I didn't have enough fabric. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. That was my yeah. very first one and I'm like, oh, so I like learned a lesson. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you're just yeah. going straight down. So you're actually going like this. Okay. So, so with each one of these, you need four. This is the second block because I don't have my rubber cutter in there up here. Um, so again, Die number five. And so when I'm putting the fabric on, I am, so can you see this yes. line that I drew on here? I'm trying to keep my fabric lined up with that line and then just slide it over. Okay. But you're still at an angle though. Yes. Yep. Because that's the way Because the die is at an angle. Is and so they do oh. that to go through the cutter easier. So if you were straight on, when you got to this point, it would be really hard to get that over that little blade right there. So it's easier to cut it at an angle. I have a question. Okay. I don't know the little label that's on the side of the die. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the, where is it supposed to be? So AccuQuilt tells you um, put it towards your belly because a lot of people don't have classes like this to attend. Mm -hmm. And it's just a good rule of thumb. Um, this way it is towards my belly. Um, cutting this way, cutting your width of fabric to cover the width like this, you actually get more pieces out of the fabric than if you were to cut it this wide and yeah. cut it long ways. Um, how do you know what angle? Why did you draw the line across where the angle is on your die? I did. Oh, you did? I, didn't, I can't see it. I saw your square, but I didn't see no... Something else that I do is I, I marked it at a quarter of an inch. So I can line up my lines. No, I meant line. this. Why, why wouldn't you draw a line this way so you can see where this angle is? Doesn't matter. It doesn't. So, oh, this is at an angle. So if you line that up exactly with your square, you're already at an angle. Right. Okay. You threw me when you said to do this and then lay it at an angle. So, I thought right. that was so I'm laying my fabric to follow these lines. Yes, I understand now. Okay. So if I put it this Especially way, my right, I'm going to be sewing on the bias. I gotcha. Thank you. I, I use just a, a sharpie to mark my lines, and it show up really good. The lines straight or angled? The lines follow the die. Okay. Yep. Yep. Let me see if I can follow the die where it's a little more obvious how angled these are. So they do it. Can everybody see? Mm -hmm. so they do it on, they do it on every single one. one. Yeah. And the reason is, if you put this in and that roller had to go straight across this, you'll do it. You'll, you, for those of you who are new, you'll do it. You'll put this angle in at a little bit of an angle and it'll actually line up where that straight blade hits your roller and you'll go hmm, to, to get it across. So at an angle, I was like square. Can you give up? Yeah, I got that one and a half inch strips and it was like, oh, and then I just kind of, like, yeah, the strips, three layers and I just kind of like did that. So like the first time I was like, oh my God. The so strips like, are straight across the die because you're actually rolling, you're not, roll, you're not cross rolling any of the strips. So the strip dies. Mm -hmm. 
wonderful. Yes. Strips are your best friend. Tell her out the first. <laughs> I, I use the strip lines a lot. So, three layers. Oh, you cut this on oh. that difficult for the strips. Of oh, yeah. Oh, okay. You can. Now, I cut these by hand. We're actually getting in a June Taylor cutting kiosk where you can just put the bolt in and say, I need, wow. I think we're cutting 10 or 11 picks. I need 11 pieces that's four inches and hit a button and it will go pink, 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 pink. And drop down. <laughs> Oh, nice. yes. That raises the price for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm hoping to um, so so share this in your social media groups because this is live on YouTube and Facebook. This is being recorded, so I'm going to wave at everybody who's watching. <laughs> so um, anybody can can watch these, and so what, who was it? Was it you posted it? Um, no, it was another. Another person posted our last pattern on one of their Acne Quilt groups, and she got like 500 likes on the the quilt. Well, I did She's, post some of my quilts. I yeah, I did this one. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it if you give us credit okay. and say, "Hey, go watch Joan Sews." That's where that's I right. I can do that. So just share because I would like to share this with more people because there are a lot of people. Unfortunately, we live in a world where not every town has a quilt shop. So sometimes people have to drive several hours or they only have the internet available to them. So sharing this and sharing your show and tells inspires other people. Okay, so I see the way it is on this side. Doesn't matter. Either way. I mean, I can turn it around. It's still going to go the same way. Okay. So, so doesn't, which one will you keep in your shirt? Tell me. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you just if you want the label, yeah, you I, just, keep it. I just want it. Yeah, yeah. So, but the fabric has, hanging over it's all like Tila County. Doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't. The it's only the thing, thing that matters is that this straight grain is going through this way. Okay. That's what matters. So, it doesn't matter if you lay your fabric this way. Well, for our cutting instructions, it will matter. Yeah. Um, She's run out of fabric. You know <laughs> So, um, you don't know us. <laughs> doesn't matter if you go through this way, but you can keep it on your belly if you want. You can. That's that's what she's saying. Just sit for her brain. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for your brain, my brain, 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 that straight brain has to go through. Make that your routine. That so, straight yeah. brain is the one that's yeah. important. If you do not do the straight brain. I've seen it off by as much as a sixteenth of an inch. Remember our um, the one we did at Christmas, the piano keys. Oh, yeah. So some people had their quarter inch seam off by like a sixteenth. Well, it's twelve rows, so twelve times one sixteenth. That's almost three quarters of an inch off when you start piecing it together. If you send it through this way, you're you will be off on your sizes and we've seen it we've had people who don't attend this class come in and say well there's something wrong with my dye i measure it and it's the right size but when i cut it's not the right size that's why they're not using the straight grain so and the straight grain is still yeah so it doesn't matter which way you feed it through either right does not you can go through either okay, direction so you go both ways right Yep. As long as the selvage is pointing toward the center. Yeah. Yeah. I can do that. Good call. Yeah. Yep. Now, what size die is this? This five. is die number five out of the eight inch cube, and that information is right here. Yeah, I saw that. So it'll tell you. So it has what, nothing to do with inches no. on the cutout. No. Right. So it'll tell you what your four inch with the fabric strip, WF with the fabric. Okay, so, um, and that's big enough so that you can get your pieces out. You'll have all of this left. Again, I'm just going to cut it up and throw it in my little box. So we don't need to save it for some part down on the road. <clears throat> you can save it in case, you know. Oh, yeah, there's oops. Oops. <laughs> oops. Um, some of them we will be using again, some of them we will not. 
use it somewhere else in a or whatever. So you said you designed this on your QA electric quilt is what I use to design quilts. That's what I have to do. Mm -hmm. Electric QA, yeah. EQA, yeah. yeah. I, that's what I have to. So, how do you, when you're designing this and you want your blocks and your triangles and things to, to be able to cut with wood, how do you know what size to make your blocks? To, because you know, every time I see my guys design one, they come up the craziest sizes. Like you cut it three and seven eighths, and you cut it three and three. Yes. And um, and <laughs> that's a really good question. Who else has electric quilt? Okay. So Electric Quilt is giving you rotary cutting instructions and they are giving you instructions. So we've all made rotary cutting quilts, right? So they tell you, okay, you're gonna cut a, I'm doing the math, hang on a second. So two and a half. So they're gonna tell you to cut a two and seven eighths inch square so okay. that you can get, and maybe it's three eighths, it's, a, it's one of the eighths. So it's either two and seven eighths, we'll just say it is, to get a two and a half inch unfinished square. So if you see, so when you're designing an EQ8, what, what you're gonna do is your block size. So this is an, an offset, same, I call it offset. So there's, the blocks are not the same size, but when you're doing your layout, you will make your blocks in multiples of the cube sizes. So if you wanna use a four inch cube, use the, the four inch block in like a two inch sashing or something. <clears throat> if you wanted to do the eight inch cube or the 12 inch cube, that's what size you'll make your quilt. So, well, that, yeah, oh, like, like when I'm, how many blocks across I want, like 10 blocks across, and I want them to be a five inch block. Okay. Okay, then when you go to cut it out, they want you to cut five and a half, or, yeah, or 10 four triangles four. is like three and. Yeah. Right, because five you're, eight, you're eight. allowing for your seam allowance. So I don't have to allow that when I'm using my die. It has it included. Yeah. But your width of fabric has to be cut enough to fit on the die. Right, so if it tells me to cut a four and a half inch or four and three eighths seems like to be a, I always round it off because I hate how that thing measures your thing, all these weird sizes, but. Well, don't round off because then your quilt yeah. is gonna be kind of well, weird. If I'm designing my quilt, I can make it any way I want though. Well, but. <laughs> no. No. You're, but if you're doing triangles, that seven eighths, five eighths, three eighths, one eighth, that is to account for this seam. So they're saying, so like if, I think it's five eighths. So if you're cutting this with a rotary cutter, um, it's gonna tell you to cut a four and five eighths square and then you're going to cut that in half diagonally, right. right? And when you sew it together, you're going to have a four and a half inch unfinished half square triangle. So it'll okay. be a four so inch unfinished. So my question is, is if I have to cut that crazy size, what die would I use to cut that crazy size if they're not, if they're all even sizes? So what I'm saying is you're determining the size of the block you don't even have to pay attention to your rotary cutting instructions. When you say this is an eight inch block and this one is, I can I know that this is gonna be die number five. And the eight inch cube. In the eight inch cube, this is gonna be die number I think three in the eight inch cube. So on the Acupo Right. So, you just so on the AccuQuilt website, they have a download. You have to register, so but then you can unsubscribe later because they email you like two or three times a day. <laughs> but <laughs> not exactly. I know. <laughs> so on their site, there is a place where you can download. Oh, here, there is a brochure that has all of the cube size, cube sizes. Oh. And their measurements, right? Oh. So. Yeah, um, that would be helpful. 
Yeah, and that's on the actual website. I think it's under Learn. I haven't even taken it out of the box yet since I bought it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sitting in my box in the kitchen. So we can put that together for as a side class or as we do. Um, I think Electric Quilt is a good product to have um, if you want to design your own quilts. Um, we can do, when we do our converting a pattern out of a magazine to our club class, I'll do a quick demo lecture on that and include it as well, because I can just pull it up here on the TV. It's a lot of time, Jesse. Oh. Mm -hmm. And you get your own pattern. And you can even program your colors and stuff. Oh, that. I know. Yeah. I've been doing this for yeah. Yeah, seven years. I've made a whole 100 quilts I've designed. Good. Yeah, so now you're going back and going, okay, how do I convert these to Acuclo? Yeah, now I've gone backwards, yes, so I can use that thing. That's Save right. All my wrists and Save my arthritic hands. So I have probably <laughs> 50 quilts that I've designed and never made. So I imagine you're the same. Oh, yeah, I've got a box full that I've designed and made yet. Yeah, so and it's a you, great tool. Once you get through this, yeah. it'll all, it'll all yeah. come together and you'll just start thinking make it any other way yeah <laughs> I tell people yeah that come in to look at this product that you know if I can't cut it out with Acuclo I'm not gonna make it I don't think they do anything yeah. but once you start I you're new because I can I can I mean you can be like the easy I mean I want to do something. Yeah, like, well, easy. Five seconds. I don't know. Like, five minutes. A minute. Well, That's I mean, I did have to cut the strip, oh, right? But cutting a strip of fabric is so much easier than cutting a square and then, you know, getting that ruler right on it. And, you know, and then you've got your dog you ears. It afterwards. Yeah, it, yeah and they the don't always ears. square up right. <laughs> Or and that the whole corner sinks down into the hole of your right. sewing That's machine when you start machine. sewing. Yeah. There's a lot of things that, you know, and you can chain stitch. You can chain stitch, yeah. Well, I do that anyway, so. Right. Any questions about our, our two blocks? Does everybody feel confident that they can go home and... So these are just single blocks that we're making. These are two single blocks. Okay. One of them is much larger than the other. Yeah. Yeah, you're doing two blocks. So it's, so it's all eight inch this time. All eight inch cube. And you're you're only using die number five out of the eight inch cube. And that's an eight inch? It's out of the eight inch cube. Yeah, don't get two. But you have to sew. If you I wish they would have named it differently. I know. I wish. It's confusing. They would have named the eight inch cube the four inch cube. And the four inch cube, the two inch cube, because this, if you sew this together, you have four inch finished square. Yeah. Yeah. So the eight so inch cube to together. as a name to me, it's kind of limiting. Some blocks, yeah, this is an eight inch cube because this is not a nine patch, right? But if you do an eight inch cube and a nine patch, that's a 12 inch, 12 inch block. That is consistent. It is. This is a 16 inch block out of the eight. I think it's interesting. It looks big. Wow. I watched them do a presentation. Yeah, this is a 16 inch. They showed your block and you can make it with this part out of 80 inch and this part out of 12. Yeah, they're sewing involved. I just happened to have only done one thing. I happen to have a block like that. Yeah. So, I know. Super, super easy. But yeah. When you're thinking about, especially you designers, when you're thinking about these cubes, this is a two inch square. So just throw out the whole eight inch, eight inch cube. This is a two inch finished square. And so it wouldn't hurt to write that on my, my blocks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're, they're yours. Write all yeah. over them, we do. So in the four inch, they it's, are two. What size is it finished in the four? Two. So this, no, in the tube, this is a one inch. Oh my gosh. I love it. It's awesome. I love that. Yeah. yeah. I am really We're digging gonna use it on this. the four inch cube. Eventually. So. Mine is sitting on your shelf. Yeah, mine has been. Well, you're going to get to use it. Yeah. That's right. Because these, you'll get to use these one inch. Mm -hmm. Right here. 
little baby pinwheels. So are you starching the fabric for those little bitty? So, okay, let's see. We'll prep, fabric prep and another tool. I didn't bring them in, but I know some of you have heard me talking about them before. There's Mary Ellen's Best Press, which is good. There is Acorn, it's Acorn Precision Pressing. If you haven't used this, give it a try. You'll need a Mr. Bottle. It comes in a bottle. You just refill your Mr. Bottle. And a very light spray over your fabric will add body to it and make it kind of <laughs> stick there before you cut it. I tell you how much she loves this product. <laughs> I was saying to her when I came in here for the first time a couple of weeks ago about the other spray that was new. Mary Ellen. Mary, Mary Ellen. And I'm like, I really like this, but it's so expensive, two dollars for a bottle. I would, I just can't see spending another ten dollars for another bottle. She says, we have something that's even better than that. It's called Acorn. Blah blah blah. Pick it up. I said, but this is sixteen dollars a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a diluted. <laughs> it is. I mean miss just one spray so with mary ellen's i mean i'm not knocking mary ellen's i i use i still best use press, it best press, best press. Best press. Yeah, you know your spray best spray best spray best spray best and then you iron it dry this so i am not this. exaggerating you take your mister bottle and you just mist it over the fabric like that iron but it do dry you dilute it with water is no. it concentrated is it just put a sprayer in it and use it put a Use a mister bottle. Don't put a sprayer yeah, in it because you'll come out with a board. <laughs> that's your what fabric will look, your fabric will look that, like this. Some of those designers take that thoughtless or whatever yeah. and they dump the fabric in yeah. and then let dry oh. so that it's a board for those little pieces. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, wow. so this wow. Acorn Precision Piecing product, mist it over one time, iron it, it adds a lot of volume or I don't body. Know, body to the um to the fabric so you do that before you cut before you cut, you cut the strip. and you yep. can do that on your cut all of the blocks if yep. you want it doesn't to hurt the cut. yeah you it doesn't hurt i mean it will make your piecing better right. the other product is also from acorn and she's actually i can't remember her name and i feel bad about that um because we're talking about her on here her um her husband is an engineer and i think he works for like dow chemical or something like that one of the chemical companies and so he actually made the formulas for these products and she makes both like little bitty tiny pieces so she would do a whole like king size quilt out of one inch half square triangles oh nice. mm -hmm. so the other product that they have is precision piecing basting glue so who pins sometimes sometimes right yeah. so when you're working on the bias like this you don't, have to. you don't have to i use like anywhere you would put a pin i use this little precision I like that. glue that drop and you, anywhere you would put a pin it's a drop it's just one two three bottle like this and it has a micro tip on it that you can just drop the glue on, mm -hmm. set it under your iron, and then you can just fly through piecing. You don't have to worry about, is my presser put pressure right? And because huh, it's not going to move or anything like that. So two products that I like, I use myself. I've used it. Yeah. I have a question so, about piecing kind of small stuff. <clears throat> something was brought up a minute ago that made me think, um, the blades on the cutter. How often do they need to be changed? The cutter. There's no blades on the cutter. <gasps> what cuts it? The, the blades the are in the die. The and that's where the blades are. If you feel them, yeah. so that's just pressure. Wow. Yeah. That's why you use the mat that pushes. The mat yeah. actually pushes the fabric down into this little spongy stuff, the sponge, mm -hmm. and that's how it cuts. So how often do they be replaced? Hundreds of cuts, thousands of. My, my. So if you're getting, especially with this one, because you can already see it's kind of starting to fill up here in the corners. That's why you have your die pick. You pick these little threads out because um, that'll keep it from cutting. Um, if you get a point where you're not cutting, replace your mat first. If that still doesn't work, then you've worn out the die. And this will be one of the first ones that we wear out because... Use it, use it everything. 
right? You had a question. Uh, I was going to say I use the glue to do my bindings. Oh, yeah. It's so much easier. Yeah. Hmm. Never thought of that. Never that the glue. There's the acorn precision basting, I think is what they call it. It's available on our website or right up, I think it's right under the register. We may be out of the precision pressing product. I was looking for it earlier and I didn't see it. But since we've moved, I don't know where anything is in this one. <laughs> so you'll have to go on the scavenger hunt and look for it. And if you find it, let me know. What was that called? Precision. Get that from that glue. It's and precision basting. Basting glue. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Um, next month, let me look at my calendar and make sure I'm there. I think I am. So we do these two blocks before next month. Yes. Um, I am not. Let's move our club, I'm at uh, Bernina University. Um, next month, so let's move it to the eighth. Perfect. Is that so okay with everybody? In July. In July. In July. Yeah. Yeah. Or seventh. I'm sorry. Seven. Seven. I will not be there, but that's okay. I'll catch up. I'll just come get my kid. Okay. I can't put the grandkids. You come in the afternoon. So we do this twice a day. That's right. 5.30. 5.30. There's a 5.30. 30. Or you can watch it online, too. Yeah, you can I like watch she's taping it. Yeah. So. Yep. On Facebook or on YouTube. If you could do that. If you can't do that. Okay. That's it for today. Perfect. Thanks for coming. Thanks for sharing your show and tells. And I think I'm going to use, because these fabrics are so gorgeous. I'm going to use That would be cool with Dana. 12 inch cube and just make big half square triangles. Nice. Yes. That'd be a vintage quilt. Mm -hmm. and it does have a vintage feel. Yeah, I like this blue one too. This one's great. I was thinking for me because I like bold, bold colors.